Our main job, as the war ended, was to pick up Australian prisoners of war. There was one day we went to Hainan Island off China. Out came these landing craft with a crowd of, I can only describe them as scarecrows in rags. And they were Australian soldiers that had been prisoners for four years. They weighed six stone apiece and all we could give them was a little bit of soup and biscuits and gradually build them up on their way back to Australia. And then, astonishingly, we were sent to Sumatra to pick up a lot of wounded Japanese soldiers to be repatriated. And we went up to a port called Kure. We buried several of the soldiers at sea. They were so bad. There was one man in a bunk I never forgot He'd got no left foot and just a jagged, red, bloody stump. And he sat there moaning. And they wouldn't allow our medical staff to touch them. And I took the opportunity from Cure to get on a lorry with some Australian soldiers and go and look at Hiroshima, where the atom bomb had dropped about three months before, with melted tram lines in the road and deserted shops with bottles fused together and even the shadow of a man that had been sitting on a bridge and nothing was standing except the framework of a domed building and the Japanese were so frightened of us, so frightened. I wrote some of the stories about my school days and my family and about the district as it was then. I'm talking about 1930s, 2,000 odd stories. My father was murdered in Paris when I was three. My grandfather had a dreadful accident and was paralysed and couldn't bear life anymore. And I often go into the flower garden with those lovely sweeping cedar trees and the chestnut trees that have been there for hundreds of years. And I think... My grandfather Charlie and Doff, my mother, must have walked through here all those years ago. And maybe they're still around watching over me at 84 years old. And I sit there and it's very peaceful. <laughs> 